Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Um, in this video, I'm going to go over something um, that might help you in your development process. Uh, sort of like once you've added things to your game, you might want to sort of do little tweaks here and there um, whilst you're playing the game. Um, but to sort of exit out, make some changes, or scroll through your hierarchy here and find oh, which which bloody one is it? Which one do I need to adjust or move around? Um, this this might just help you out in certain cases. So it's call in editor. So you can see here that I've created a ball spawner, and my ball spawner's got some options here which uh, are not normally a, a part of a blueprint. Um, so these are these are custom features. So I can change the material of these balls that are being produced. I can create some spawn points so it spawns from different places. I can stop and start the spawner. Um, but you can do multiple things with this. So what I'll do is, for example, um, here's another option. I've got a light here in my scene, and I'm not too sure what colour I should I should pick, or whether the intensity is high enough, or you know I, I want to make some changes, but um, I don't want to have to go through the settings and find each bit um, and change them individually. But I'm 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 only sort of I don't want to change everything. I just want to change the colour, the intensity, and whether it's on or off for example. Uh, so what you can do is if you play within the editor and I mean like uh, within this screen here you can press shift and F1 and you get control of your mouse back. Um, what that allows you to do is it allows you to select things in your hierarchy. So you can select all of these balls individually, you can select your character and, and do bits to it on the fly as, as um, in runtime. So my light for example I've added some functions here which allows me to set the new intensity in lumens. So I'm going to change this to, um, I don't know, 800. And then if I change the intensity, you can see that my light then updates. And obviously you could go to your point light here within it, find your intensity, change that, scroll down, find is visible in the world, is visible, turn that off and on. You know, you could do that. But you could also quickly just set up um, on your top level class, in my instance is, um, is this bulb, and you can just set a little toggle, toggle light on and off. So straight away I'm like, oh okay, yeah, let's just see what it looks like we're out. Oh yeah, it's a little bit too dark, so we'll keep that on. Let's change the colour to green, let's change the light colour. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I like that. So I just want to talk over the back end of setting these functions up, because they can be quite handy. So I'll nip back to the ball spawner, I can stop that from spawning, I can start it, I can change the physics uh, material of the balls that it's spawning. Um, not that changing them to metal does anything really in this instance, but um, it, it's, it's, it can be useful. Now, the one that I'd like to show first as well, as you can see I've created some spawn points. So the balls all spawn on the roof and they, they, they sort of slowly roll down. With my ball spawner selected, I can create a new spawn point. And just before I do, I just want to show you there's this array. So this array, every time a spawn point is created, it's added to this array um, to know where all the spawn points are within the game, which is really useful. So if you're having to add a spawn point and then say, right, it's this one in the game, I can just press create a spawn point, and as you can see, it makes a new one. That's then over here in the world. I can then drag this to wherever I want. And then when I run the game, and obviously I need to go and find my ball spawner because I've set it where, I don't want it to run straight off the bat. I only want it to run when I uh, tell it to. Um, what have I just done? I've just changed the sourcing of my thing. There you go. Start my spawner and you should start seeing balls spawn from around here. So there we go. So they start spawning there in the world. So how do we do this? This is actually really, really simple. Um, obviously I've got some functions here. I bet I'm probably going to better off going to my light bulb because I've actually set this up as development tools. So I've got a toggle light. Now obviously how you would set this up in blueprints, the, the actual function itself is pretty much, is nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I've got a toggle light custom event that runs into a flip-flop. Flip-flop is, is a toggle. A, B, A, B, A, B, and it just switches between the two. So what I'm doing is I'm switching between a set visibility to 
yes, true, visible, or not visible at all. And the one thing that makes it callable um, in the editor as a button is simply this call in editor button. That's all it is. Take that and you get a button in the editor for you to be able to mess around with. Now obviously I was changing them at runtime when my game's actually being played, but obviously there's nothing stopping you at all from clicking this and doing it here while you're in development too. You know, I can still toggle that on and off and change my light colour to some random while we're here. So you can still do it whilst editing, uh, but you can also do it in runtime, so that's that's pretty neat. Go back to my light and I added some variables as well so if we go back to my light you can see I've got a light color and intensity these just work hand in hand with the buttons um, so effectively um, from the uh, for the color um, I've created a variable which is a linear color called it new light color plug that into a set light color node but obviously this requires an execute to actually set so that's where your custom event comes in so change light color call an editor so then when we've set our new color and click our change light color button it's going to trigger this node and same with intensity effectively so set intensity that's going to take in a float so we've just made a new float called new intensity in lumens because uh, that's what my light is set in lumens um, and then I've just got a call in editor function or event sorry uh, for changing intensity that's pretty much it. The ball spawner is um, a little bit... it's not any different, it's it's pretty much the same um, but how we get it to add to the array I guess is arguably slightly different um, but how we create that button is exactly the same. So I've got a create spawn point um, sort of event and what that does is that spawns an actor of target point and it adds it to an array called spawn points and that's it that is it that is basically it so we've got an array of spawn points here you can see it's zero because this is an actor or sorry an object reference um, you can't pre-add these you can see here that um, with this being an object reference it's not allowed um, you can only set an object reference whilst you're in the game or in the editor so this is now an object but in the blueprint uh, that doesn't exist at that point in time so for example I can click on on this and add my spawn points now and reference target points within the world because they exist anyway I don't want to get too much into that because that's a um, not, not to do with this and just so they don't spawn directly on top of this ball spawner I've just told it to add a random between 25 and 100 to the X location so you can grab it a bit easier. My start spawner and stop spawner are both callable functions. One starts a timer which loops through spawning balls and my stop spawner is exactly the same, it just clears this timer and effectively stopping it. My change physics material for my balls um, does exactly the same. Every time a ball is spawned um, I can set that sphere's uh, physics material to uh, a new physics material which has been meta variable and we just pick that from the editor. Providing you've got all of these variables to expose on spawn and editable they'll become visible. Um, so what you could also do is you could say I want to change the um, material set material let's have a look um, I will create a new custom event custom event change material material there we go change material my material is going to be a variable so I can change it on the fly I'm going to change the word into new material compile and instead of the default being set to none I'm just going to change it to basic zero which is orange and my change material node I'm just going to say call in editor so that's going to call and it's going to assign this sphere um, a new material now obviously every time a new ball spawns this target changes but there's a there's a 10 second lifespan on my balls 
So what would happen is as they spawn, it would change. Uh, it's not going to change all of them. It's going to change uh, every instance after that. What you could do if you wanted to set all of them is just do a for each and save every one of these in an array. Um, I probably wouldn't advise that because your array will become massive, but um, you could do that if you want to. So let's go back and test that now. So I want to be able to change the ball color on the fly. So I'm just going to run up here just for visual purposes. I'm going to press Shift F1, get my ball spawner. Let's get that going. Start spawning. So you can see now I've got change material as a property, as a button. Um, and it appears that I've not set the material uh, to visible. So new material, uh, instance editable and expose on spawn. So now I, I have visibility of it. Let's go back. Let's hit play. Again, I'm just going to run back up here. And we're going to press Shift F1, ball spawner, start spawner. Great. So I'm going to change my material to ice. So change physics material. And I'm going to change the color of every everything to orange now. So you can see straight away anything new that spawned. Oh, that's interesting. It just changes a singular object and doesn't change all of them. Yeah, so that's to be expected. So as I mentioned earlier, um, you could add all of these to an array um, and you could say set all. So you could set every one of them to that material from then on. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So we've got these buttons. Um, this is obviously a relatively short video. I do apologize for that, but um, I hope that some of the functionality that you can make with these, especially in like development, these are just a couple of use cases. The one that I use the most is obviously the spawn locations. If I'm making like um, a shooter game, something like that, and I want um, sort of enemies to spawn in various locations of the map, or something multiplayer where uh, you've got different spawn locations in the area. If you feel like, oh, there's not a spawn location quite near, you could just pick your sort of player manager, or in my case, my ball spawner, and just create a new spawn point. So like that and go, you know what, I feel like there should be a spawn location over here. And it's done. It's added itself to the array. One button click just like that. There's no add target, then go to my ball spawner, find the array, add it to the array. Um, there's none of that. It's just one button and it and it's done. Um, yeah, and that's it. So if that was helpful, please consider giving me a like. Um, if you want to discuss it or discuss anything else, please consider leaving a comment down below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in another video, I guess. Thank you.